Living Just Above the Poverty Line by Anna Zacharias, Jen Ritchie, and Jen Greenberg. Poverty thresholds are the dollar amounts used to determine poverty status. Thresholds may vary according to the size of the family or the ages of its members. The same thresholds are used throughout the United States and do not vary geographically. Not as complete as a description of what people and families need to live. Here is an example of a family just above the poverty threshold. Forty-five percent of Americans live on incomes that fail to provide basic economic security. They also found that the economic insecurity rate rose from 38 percent to 45 percent from 2007 to 2011. The security gap between single men and single women without children is small, but it is there. Seventy percent of single mothers working full-time do not earn economic security wages as opposed to 45 percent of single fathers. 15% of white workers, 25% of black workers, and 36% of Hispanic workers live in two full-time households with earnings below the poverty line. There is a stunning new report by the Associated Press painting a bleak economic picture here in the U.S. Take a look at these numbers. It finds four out of five American adults struggle with joblessness near poverty or reliance on welfare at some point in their lives. One reason cited, the loss of good paying manufacturing jobs here at home. And the number of poor people remain stuck at a, a record level, 46 million, or 15% of the population. Stuart Varney, Varney and Company hosts Fox Business Network with me now. Stuart, good morning to you. Michael. Is this as bad as people think, the study suggests? Yes, it is. And in fact, it's getting worse. Middle class people are seeing their incomes, their real incomes, decline. What they can buy with their incomes is in decline. And the pace is actually speeding up. For lower income workers, it's 4% decline over the Obama years. For some categories of, of labor, it's even worse than that. But over the four years of President Obama's first term, that speed of declining real incomes has actually speeded you look up. At, you look at the stock market, I mean, it's booming. Uh, I mean, we're at record highs. What yep. explains that? But that is because Ben Bernanke is pumping a trillion dollars a year into the economy, 85 billion a month. He is the stimulus which is helping the stock market and helping the housing market. So far, it has not helped the economy. So you take away the ink and perhaps the bulls are not running as much as they have been. That's true. Uh, yeah, others will contend the policy's wrong. You can't keep taxing more and adding regulations and then as a result expect growth. Yeah, what if would I may, you say to that? I would say that, in my opinion, that is accurate. This week, we're going to get numbers which show the economy is only growing at about a 1% pace. That's nowhere near good enough. 1%? Yes, 1%, maybe 1.5%. If we had growth of 4, 5, 6%, that would lift all boats and a lot of this, some of this insecurity and joblessness would certainly disappear. But in the immediate future, it's not going to happen. What are you going to get from 1%? I mean, that's, that's Belgium, baby. Uh, yeah, <laughs> close. <laughs> that's true. We're like Europe. Yeah. Very much like Europe. See you at 920. Yes, sir. FBN, Barney and Company. Check them out. Thank you, Stuart. Nice to see you on a Monday. What's There is assistance for those that are below the poverty line. Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, offers nutrition assistance to low-income individuals and families. They are the largest program in the domestic hunger and safety net, and they work with state agencies, nutrition educators, and neighborhood organizations to make sure the eligible individuals can access the benefits. To qualify in Rhode Island, individuals must be a resident of the state and either have a bank account balance of under 2001 or a balance of under 3,001 and share a household with a person aged 60 or over or a person with a disability. Many families must do shift work and work at all days during the day and at night. This causes families a lot of stress. 
Individual development accounts are savings accounts for people with low income. A living wage is a decent wage which allows a family the basic needs of living without any help from government poverty programs. The seven factors included in calculating the cost of a decent standard living are housing, food, child care, transportation, health care, and other basic necessities. Minimum wage earners do not make enough to afford a decent living wage. In conclusion, many families are struggling to stay above the poverty line, minimum wage jobs don't provide enough income, and it is very difficult to save enough to bounce back from being just above the poverty line.